from Los Angeles, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. We appreciate your patronage here at the old radio ranch. We really do. Thank you for being with us. Just uh, great to be standing here. Great to be here. Been um, sitting back and just uh, enjoying my position here at the helm of this broadcast. Selling blab by the pound. I am so proud. I can't tell you how proud I am to be standing here doing this program. People say to me, uh, you know what? Uh, what legacy will you leave? What will be the thing that people will remember you for? And you know what I'll be remembered for? I'm going to tell you. There are people out there every day slogging through traffic or rain or snow or ice or driving around to get away from their nagging spouses. And I provide a form of entertainment they can't get anywhere else. Day in and day out. Do you know that uh, my uh, 10th anniversary doing this program for this network is coming up? 10 years. All of it spent in this room. With an occasional um, trip outside to a uh, remote location or a... Uh, a radio station somewhere. Yeah, we did spend two weeks in uh, Studio A down the hall. Uh, was that during the Grammy Awards? We got kicked out of the studio for a little while. Uh, yeah, so anyway, yeah, but mostly we've been here. And um, in any case, uh, I will tell you that uh, I'm damn proud of what we've done. I continue to be proud of what we've done. And uh, those of you try wagging a finger in my face and warning me that God is going to get me or I'm going to hell or that uh, if I ever had children or grandchildren that they would be ashamed of me. You know what? I am not the least bit ashamed of what I do and what I've done at all. And I don't believe I have any reason to be ashamed. Now, let me make it clear that I am proud of what we do here every day. And I'm going to tell you some of the reasons I'm proud. One, because in the midst of all the raucous commentary by myself and by the callers, there actually is a sprinkling of ground beef in there. We actually do serve a purpose beyond being an entertaining radio program. We talk about serious issues, but you can never tell that they're serious issues because we're having too much fun. Uh, I also believe that I represent a point of view that you rarely hear expressed. The point of view of the guy. Because all of the media have become just a bunch of deballed pussies. Who are all afraid of offending women. The TV programs that you see, the networks, the radio formats... How many stations, how many shows are for guys? And the answer is, not much. All guys get is sports. Damn straight, I'm proud of what I do. And I have no reason not to be proud. Do I? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 
866-985-8800-866. You know, I just started listening to you. And if, every time I listen to you, I just get uh, more and more disturbed about your outlook on women. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas. Oh, yeah, the Tom Likas Show. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. It's Adam on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, what's up, Tom? Uh, just the ratings, Adam. Of course, in Dallas, we're just getting started, but uh, that's what's going to happen. Hey, yeah, man. I just started listening to y'all when they put you back on this spot. Um, I just wanted to say thanks, man, for all the stuff that you say and do. Uh, man, it's really starting to turn stuff around in my own life, tell you that. Wow, I love that. Yeah, man. Um, I also, I just wanted to say you're talking about uh, guys really not getting to be able to, you know, voice their own opinions in radio and, and TV and stuff like that. Or in the office or anywhere else. Exactly. And I just, man, I just wanted to say there's something I just kind of think about while you was listening to your show that freedom of speech is okay as long as nobody gets offended. Well, that's right. And in most cases, you get freedom of speech uh, as long as uh, it isn't going to threaten anybody or offend anybody. Exactly. And that's not freedom of speech. No, it's not. So, I mean, it just, every time I hear, you know, like, people getting just hammered by the, by what they say and the, yo, oh, you can't do that, you can't say that, it, we're, we're in America, man. That's right. That's right. It's all right to say whatever the hell we want to say. Well, then we should exercise it more often. All I'm going to say is I'm proud of what I do. I have no reason not to be proud. Exactly, man. You go. All right. So, well, I gotta get back to work, man. So, All right, Adam. So thanks for taking my call, man. Thank you for the call, Michael, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I just wanted to thank you for being so true and having such a true entertainment. Nowadays, you really can't find any true entertainment on the radio or on the TV. And you're sort of like you give people guys the balls to whether make a decision in their relationships or whatever they got to do. Well, if nothing else, I reintroduce them to their balls. Or maybe that's what you do, but it's it's you shouldn't be shame or oh, I'm anything not. like that. You're People actually say to me, "Wow, what kind of legacy will you leave?" Hey, I'm proud of what I'm doing. Exactly. You know the people. I think the people who don't like you is the people who can't face the truth. And you speak nothing but the truth. I've been listening to you for quite a years, and I understand what you're saying. And people will call you back and say and this and that is just they can't face the truth. They, sometimes people need to face the truth. You're doing a hell of a job. I hope nobody stops you doing what you're doing because there's people out there that need you. Michael, thank you for that. It's Melinda on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Melinda. First time caller, long time listener. Thank you. And I know your ratings are up and I will ask you how you're doing because I love you so. Oh, I'm doing great. That is wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. Um, well, I've been listening to you for, like I said, quite a while now, and um, I have turned my husband on to you, um, and we just, oh, my gosh, the things you say, it is so right on. And, I mean, I have a son myself, um, and, again, I am still married, and I plan on being for a very long time. Um, and I always want to have my son living under the rules that you put down on Like Us 101 mm -hmm. just because um, – I mean, a lot of girls out there, they are money-sucking. I won't say a bad word. but Whores. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, but, I mean, I know how women can be. Myself, not being the type that is, you know, ever after money, but, I mean, I I am what I am. I'm a woman that loves Tom Likas, and I have a lot of friends that they know of you, and they think I'm crazy, but I love <laughs> I love that. And, I mean, it's, it's, I know it's crazy, and, I mean, you're kind of against, I wouldn't say against women, but, I mean, you're very much just telling guys how to be careful with certain types of women. That's right. And the women that call you up and blast you, I think they're crazy. Of course, they're they're still listening, and they're giving you all your ratings that you get. So why not, right? You're exactly right, Belinda. Thank you very much. Katrina on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. And I care. <laughs> Good. Second time caller. Thank you. Listen, um, <clears throat> I turned my 23-year-old son on to you, and he listens. And shout out to you, Kevin, if you're listening. <laughs> uh -huh. And anyways, I just wanted to tell you that you've changed my life in a couple of ways, uh -huh. or at least given me a different perspective on things. Right. Um, I finally come out and said I'm an atheist. Wow. 
I have never been able to say that out loud before. Mm -hmm. Before listening to you, I always said, oh, I'm agnostic. Oh, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. Or you're Unitarian. That's another uh, disguise that atheists wear. (laughs) Exactly. So listening to you, (laughs) hearing you say, pick a team. Pick a team and be on it. That's right. And I have just said, and you know, I, I find that I offend people, and so what? Who cares? Who cares? Life is short. Offend as That's many people right. as you can. <laughs> Absolutely. The other thing is, I'm mar- I've am i been married for almost six years, and um, I percentage-wise, I make 80% of the income, and he makes 20%, and you are right on. I am a two. <laughs> I looked in the mirror and went, yep. <laughs> I'm lucky to have a man. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm a, yes, and I make the money, and I have a man, and I have a good man, but no, he doesn't make much money. I'm all he can afford. Look at and you. it's absolutely the truth. <laughs> you speak the truth, and I can hang with that because I'm happy to have a husband. Perfect. Yeah. So you are right on, and I know there there will be people calling up saying, oh, no, I I have, like that other girl called up the the prison one. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's just unbelievable to me. She must be the biggest loser ever. Wow, well, and uh, no, no, her boyfriend's the biggest loser ever, and uh, she's the yeah, second yeah. biggest. <laughs> she, she, yeah, exactly, exactly. But, Tom, I just wanted to say I listen to you every day. I love listening to you. I turn you on to everybody I talk to. And just keep it up. You're doing great. Katrina, thank you. Goldie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes, hello. Um, I was just going to ask you a question. Um, I, well, I think, like, the same thing that she said, uh, you've opened my eyes to a lot of things. Like, I think that it's not only helping men, but I think also what you say helps women because we realize certain things that we do wrong and that, like, a lot of, you know, women don't. Like, I think men and women don't connect because men want totally different things that women want, and women want different things. So, like, you kind of, like, open up that um, that way where, like, we can understand where men are coming from. So uh-huh. I think it's great. But I heard you call me a loser, and I wonder, I was wondering why would you do that. Did it, when did I call you a loser? Just now she said the Persian girl that just called is a loser. No, that's, it, you hadn't gotten on the air yet when that woman called. Oh, then why did you call? How can I call you a loser? We hadn't talked to you yet. Well, then why did she say my name? How did she know my name? She didn't say your name. Oh. She was talking about a woman who called in who has a boyfriend in jail. Is that you? Oh, no, 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 not at all. All right, so you were not... The other question was, why do you think... What I asked was, why do you think that women are... I think, like, in the past 20 years, women have, like, you know, um, they've become bitches in a certain way. And why do you think that is? Why do you think that... Um, that's happened, or like uh, I think the feminist that. movement had something to do with that. Right. I think right. Uh, women are told you can have it all, and you don't have to look pretty, and you don't have to, you know, on and on and on. You don't have to do uh, the dishes. You don't have to make coffee. You don't have to make uh, anything. You don't have to make the bed. And right. uh, so the result is, women want men to pay for everything. Yeah, and I think that but they like, don't want to do yeah. anything. Right, and they've lost their role as women in the world. Like they've become. Right. They've taken a masculine way to them, and that's not good because that's not natural. So I think that's part of the problem. Well, I think you're right. That's why I have uh, turned to women from other countries. I've uh, given up on this. And I think it's great. I mean, I, because, like, I've never had a boyfriend for whatever reason. Like, I think I'm a really pretty girl, but just I've never had one. And I don't really know why, but anyways, that's not even the point. My thing is maybe because I don't know what to do or what's right to make men want me, and I think maybe it has something to do with the fact that I'm too much of a, like a modern woman instead of like a feminine like back in the 20 years ago. Yeah, you should be like a 20 years ago. Actually, it's more like 30 or 40 years ago, because uh, 20 years ago was 1984. Yeah. Women like, were already sure. turning into uh, uh, masculine bitches back then. Well, what can we do to stop this? Not be one. Right. That's what that's what you can do. Andy on the Tom Likas show. Hey Tom, what's happening? Uh, not much, Andy. Hey, I got a question for you. I'd like to know, uh, you know, you having some background in politics and uh, you know having your own political radio talk show. I'd like to know uh, which candidate out of the uh, you know the Democratic candidates for president feel would best bring forward the values of Likas 101 
and uh, represent your teachings to America? Uh, none of the Democrats, I can tell you. Really? That. Yeah. Uh, none of them, because they're all politically correct. Okay. And uh, gen generally, Democrats uh, hold to a politically correct uh, point of view. Uh, the reason I do not belong to a political party, might I say, is because uh, the two parties are... You know, neither one of them represents most Americans. Uh, the uh, Democratic Party, uh, I certainly agree with them in terms of uh, uh, your right to uh, choose and your right to read or look at whatever you want. Uh, but I don't agree with the idea that if people just want to be lazy bastards and sit home and do nothing all the time or pop out 18 kids, they should be able to just dip into the public till. I, I don't agree with that. And then Republicans, on the other hand, I don't agree with them uh, when they talk about uh, pornography or the FCC. I don't agree with them when they talk about trying to ban abortion. Uh, but I certainly agree that we should spend less money. I just wish the Republicans would spend less money. Uh, but they say they believe in spending less money, but then they spend more. So I don't, I, I, all these bastards, I, I could simply do without them. Really? Okay, so there's no uh, official Tom Lakers endorsement? Oh, no, none. I uh, I don't endorse any of these good people. None of them. Not George Bush, not John Kerry, not any of the others. I, I don't. All right, Tom, well, I thought I'd ask, uh, can you take me out with the uh, bong hit and a thank you, Jesus? Here you go, Andy. Thank you, Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. Uh, we're talking about uh, my pride in doing this broadcast. I have no reason to be ashamed. On the contrary, I'm extremely proud of what we do here. Michael, hello. Hey, Tom, how are you? How are you? Forget about it. Hey, what are you talking about? Yeah. I'm a, yeah, I'm a native New Yorker in Texas. Yeah, I know, and I'm sure you remind everybody about it. Yeah, hey, I try to, I try to keep this accent polished. It's the only, only thing that distinguishes me from them. In any event, I'm a, I'm a first time caller to your show and I've been listening to your show on and off for the past three months. And I really do enjoy what you have to say and the way you say it. Great. It's that direct, straightforward approach that gets me slammed here in Texas because I'm, you know, I'm guilty of the same thing. Uh huh. Uh, you know, I listen to some of these women who have been calling you trying to dispute what you say in the absence of any facts do they have. Uh, and I think basically it stems from the realization that they know you're right, and they just don't like the proverbial mirror being held to their face. That's right. Uh, That's because yeah. a lot of them are fat pigs. You're absolutely right. And a matter of fact, there is, I've never seen more in any other place than I've ever been than here in Texas. And, of course, they do have a lot of hotties. Oh, Dallas, Dallas has tons of hot women. Uh, really is one, the, really one of the few cities in the United States that is competitive with Los Angeles in terms of having hot chicks. Well, I mean, for me, it's, it's LA, Dallas, Miami. Those are the three cities with the hottest chicks. Well, I got I beg to differ to a degree because, you know, I'm New York City born and raised. Uh, New York City is full of mouthy, chunky bitches think who so? think that the chicks on Sex in the City are hot and they're not. <laughs> Well, you know, there are a lot of Puerto Rican women in, in uh, New York City, and there are very few here, and a lot of Puerto Rican women are very hot. Yeah, well, they, I, you know, I, I won't disagree with you on that, but uh, there's a lot of chunky, homely, butch-looking bitches in New York who think they're all that. And they're not! The Tom Likas Show. Like us on Hot Talk 1080 KOTK. <laughs> This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles, at 1-800-5800-TOM, that's your telephone number. I simply came on the air and stated that I am proud of what we do here, though I'm not ashamed of the work we do. There are people who tell me I should be ashamed. I, I'm not. I have every reason to be proud. Tamaria, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I am a short-time listener and first-time caller. Yes. And I guess my um my beef necessarily isn't with you. It's with a lot of these women that call in who call themselves women. Like the woman who just called and said that apparently women are losing their roles in society. They're becoming right. more masculine. That's true. What is, why would anyone, why can you not, how can you not be, or how is it possible that you can't be feminist and be 
pretty or in, in sexy and not masculine. I, because I've never seen a pretty woman who called herself a feminist. The last one was Gloria Steinem in her youth, and I haven't seen one since. Well, how many women are you talking to? That's the thing that Thousands. I... Thousands. How many women have you seen? Thousands. I, are you kidding? I'm in the public eye. I make no, appearances. I said they're a feminist. Uh, no. So, th so basically, you... Never... <laughs> no. Not one. I find that extremely hard. No, to I, I, the women I've found who uh, say they are feminists are frequently lesbian or fat or homely, but I have rarely well, seen I'm an attractive one. I'm none of the above. Well, again, I, <laughs> look, there's exceptions to every rule. One day the sun will not come up tomorrow. Uh, a, even a blo broken clock is right twice a day. Uh, the fact is that just because occasionally... Something like that. And by the way, we're taking your word that you're attractive. We we will be the judge of that if we ever see you. No, but and I want to know how attractive you are because you seem. To oh, I'm hideous. I'm a minus one. I, I say it all the time. You you not you think you're being smart here, dear? But uh, I I beat you to it. You you think you're an? I'm hideous. Uh, there, there's a reason. And you know what? All of us are on the radio. There's a reason we're here. We're homely. <laughs> we're homely. Well, you know. Otherwise, we'd be on television making real money. <laughs> real money, though. Uh, no, no, but we're making a lot more money on television. That, that's very true. Actually, my major is journalism, so I aspire well, to do that one there day. There you but go. I guess, um, yes, but dear, what is your husband's name? My husband? I'm only 25. There we go. What's your boyfriend's name? I'm not going to say his name on the radio. Do you really have a boyfriend, or is it just a, a, a booty call? It could be a little both. Yeah, it's probably a <laughs> yeah. You're not a little of both, dear. You are one or the other. So he's a booty call. And and the deal is with you uh, chicks who are all like, uh, and I've talked about this on the air before. I don't know if you heard it, but uh, you chicks who are obsessed with your careers. That's great oh, and all. I'm so not obsessed with my career. I can tell you that much. Now yeah, here you are studying to become a journalist. Uh, that's going to require a lot of work if you plan to be successful. Actually, I've already, I've already, um, I'm already almost done. But I, I assume that that'll come to it. But I'm not obsessed about my. By the way, you're 25. You're still going to school. No, I'm done with school. Actually, you didn't just hear it. I said I finished in May. Sorry, and I so did start out as a journalism major. So it did take me quite some time. It took you a long think... time. Most people graduate college at 21. Most people do, but most people aren't me. And just because you graduate doesn't mean you have a good career in your head. And a lot of people who are done with school who have. What, what, what were you doing all those years? Well, so I started out as two different, as a different major before that. I see. So, so, what, I, so you already you were undecided as to what you wanted to become when you uh, graduated. No, I knew what I wanted to become, but I didn't want to be a double major. And it, actually, I loved it with my parents, but more stuff that I want to get that I don't want to get into. Mm -hmm. so that's not actually why I called. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to know why you think that men lying to women is is better than you or you say women are all gold diggers. But why do you teach your list? I, I never saw, again. I said the exact opposite. I said all women are not gold diggers. <laughs> I said only attractive women can be gold diggers. Uh, only attractive. Fat and homely women cannot be gold diggers, by definition. But, okay, but you say... Who would give money to a fat, homely woman? I mean, that would be insane. There's lots of... And what is your definition of fat? Why do you all of a sudden think that someone's fat or unattractive? Well, and most people... Oh, by the way, who is coaching you over there? Tell her to shut up. <laughs> right now. She's the one who got me listening to you, but okay. That's okay. Tell her I said to shut up. If, shut she, up. if she wants to talk to me, she can call in herself. She doesn't need to hide behind your skirt. You probably don't wear skirts. Probably wear pants. No, well, okay, well, maybe. Mm. And what's wrong with that? Well, again, uh, masculine, 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 and that's what. If a woman wears a pair of pants, she's masculine. Yes, guys don't like it. What do you mean, us guys? Actually, I think real men like a woman to be a woman, no, no matter what she is. I no, no. Uh, you call and listen to real her men not. like a woman who is feminine. They don't like women who want to be men like you. But a, pa a pair of pants is not masculine. Yes, if it is definitely masculine. We, if you have legs, we want to see them. But it's not about what you want to see all the time. It's well, my body. that's fine. You can be whatever you want, but you'll be much less popular with men by doing. But you know what? Guess what? I don't give a sh about men. Well, uh, we know you don't. And see, now your true bitch yeah, attitude is coming out. It's coming out. And, and that's, uh, again, you have proven my point. I'm proud to be a bitch because that way I will never end and up. you're proud to be a bitch. I am so proud to be a bitch. I because know. Being a there you go. Being a bitch. So it took me four and a half minutes to completely uncover you, to unmask you for the bitch that you are. Well, thank you, Tom. Yes. What would you consider yourself, then, if I'm a bitch? I think that that'd make you one, too. Uh, no, no, no. Because I don't see a lot of masculinity in you. I think you're kind of hiding behind a lot of things that you just don't want to admit. Well, dear, I, when did you, are you a psychiatrist? You, you just put that breath over. Are you a psychiatrist, dear? Are you a psychologist? Actually, I have to. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that doesn't, what does that mean? So what? Nothing. So I, I'm basically saying I think that you have a very, very, very. Don't low start self repeating your material here, dear. You have to have new material to say on the air. I'll hang up. I low self esteem I'm earlier. Just saying, don't start repeating, or I'll hang up. I think that you have low self esteem because I. That's don't the second time you said that now. Well, can you let me finish? Maybe, maybe not. Guess whose show this is, dear? It's your show. Right. 
But people like me help you have this show. No, no. You haven't helped me at all. Oh, I haven't. No. So calling in. So people right now are not listening to me. Oh, I, they're, they're, listening, they're listening to you because they want to hear me eat you alive. Oh, you're eating me alive. I haven't started yet. Okay, let's hear it. Oh, no, don't worry. I will do it right now if that's what you'd like to hear. But because you are a masculine bitch. You are the kind of person that most men want no part. We'll put you on hold so we don't have your sound effect in the background. Uh, you are a masculine bitch and a masculating bitch. A ball-busting bitch. And you're the kind of woman who is really a man in disguise, who, who really very few men want to be a part of. And if you do have a boyfriend, and I'd love to see the proof of that, uh, I am certain uh, that that poor bastard uh, is uh, terrorized by you and uh, is a pussy uh, or through and through, and they, his balls are in your purse. Frankly, I find it hard to believe you even have a boyfriend, but certainly there are a lot of pussified, terrified men out there who will just say yes, ma'am, to any woman who comes along and talks to them, which is you. To be a man, a yes, man woman is not the kind of man I want. Well, hang on a second here. Bill, what do you want to say to Tamaria? Oh, oh, yes, Tamaria uh, okay. Hey, Tammy, I just wanted to let you know that uh, you're not as smart as you think, because if you were, you, weren't be, you wouldn't be going into journalism. Do you know what that profession generally, uh, income generally generates? About twenty thousand, maybe thirty. So good luck on your yeah, but guess what, Bill? career, honey. Thank you, but I actually have great parents who take care of me and who oh, make a great so living. There we no go. Like so there's there's the man who's paying the bills. There's the man. Actually, my mother makes more money than my father. I'm sure. I'm sure she's the man of the family. I'm sure she wears the pants. She there's wear another pants, exposure you know she there, Tom. She's a very intelligent she's, person. Probably more intelligent than the two put together. Really? She's a leech. She's a leech. You are, honey. Why are you I, to I have to depend on my parents. I don't have to worry actually, about making I money. Don't depend and on then my... you're going to get a husband to leech off of him. I some plan on getting married, So why don't you shut the hell up because some, I don't know what you're talking because about. Because I'm trying to talk over you because you don't shut up, you stupid, ignorant. Oh, Bill, that hurts me, you know. Oh, yes, it does because someone... the truth hurts, honey. You know what? It doesn't hurt for someone to call me a bitch. It's, I called you the C word. It just shows me lady. how intelligent you are. Oh, yes. How I'm much so of a man you are? I'm a Mensa you graduate. Are a Mensa. <laughs> I wish. And you wish. Actually, I don't. Yeah, that's right, honey. I don't need Mensa to tell me that I'm intelligent. Well, I know. listen, if you could shut up for a second, Why should I you would have a real... Me? I haven't disrespected you at all. I haven't called you anything. Now, let's uh, stop using that word on the air, okay? Well, he's the one. What do you think this is, the Super Bowl? I did not call him any personal names. Hey, Tamara, he wanted personally to talk to me. Tamara, i got one thing to say. It's actually come, Arya. Get it right. Whatever. Uh, you know what? You're just a woman. Come on, you. That's all you'll ever be. A woman? I'm proud to be and that. That's all you. you'll ever be. So get it in your thick... Stupid skull. It doesn't bother me. You're not insulting me by calling me a woman. I wish That's you would right. know that. But the problem is, yeah, that, that, that would be a compliment. Woman. You're really a man. You're not a feminine woman. You're a feminist woman. And a feminine woman will be gentle uh, and you, understanding. <laughs> and you are not a gentle and understanding. I'm not gentle to you because woman. you don't deserve any gentleness. Uh, uh, yeah, just like I don't understand uh, you. Now, like you now, don't, understand don't start me. insulting Kamanya now. She's going to be <laughs> very upset. Hey, you know what? We should get together, honey, because, you know, these kind of sparks would really be hot. I think so. We know that. I, I think that's hot. <laughs> you probably, think, you probably like his handprint on your ass. I, I know you would. Tom like it. Wolf. Tom like it. Wolf. Eight. Hundred. Five. Eight. Hundred. Tom. 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 What's the good word today? Boobs. Boobs are back. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas. Only on Hot Talk 10. Now, Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Kendra on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. Hi. I am actually in Tyler, Texas, and I have only been listening to your show for a couple weeks. Yeah. And I just turned in tonight and wanted to fit your clarified position on what women's roles actually should be. A role in what? Just anything. I just, I just, like I said, I just turned in, tuned in, and don't really understand what your view of women should be today. Uh, my view of what women, well, put it this way, everybody's different. My view of what a woman is for me in my life is that a woman should be fun to be around, uh, should not uh, mouth off in such a way that she will embarrass me or cause scenes in public. And um, if I'm going to have a permanent relationship or a semi-permanent relationship, the purpose of it is so that when I get home from work, the lights are on and somebody's home. Anybody who comes home later than I do 
is a booty call, but will never, ever, ever be a permanent relationship for me, ever. Okay. You need to move to Texas. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't see the problem with that. Well, that's my I point. I think there's a lot of women who see what I'm talking about. Right, and I don't see the problem that all the other callers are having. Women who wear the pants, women who want to uh, mouth off uh, like bitches, uh, women who want to embarrass me in public or try to prove how smart they are all the time, uh, that's fine. You go on final jeopardy, but I, I don't want to live with you. That's the bottom line. Right. Well, I completely agree with you. Women have every right to become anything they want to be, but they don't have a right to be with me. Okay. So there you go. Well, thank Ken. you very much. I'm glad I clarified that. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Veronica, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Veronica. Oh, I'm just calling because I'm, well, I'm a first-time caller, short-time listener. Uh-huh. And I was calling because with, like, what the last lady was saying, I totally agree with her and with what you say. I mean, when you're talking to the females, instead of them calling and complaining about what you're saying, they should listen and learn, you know, because right. the best way to learn from a man is actually to hear his side yeah. and how he feels. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just calling because, I mean, a lot of things that you say I totally disagree with because I'm a moral sort of person. Yes. But um, it makes a lot of sense. And I take what you say and I learn from it and it helps me, you know? Well, I'm glad to hear that, Veronica. I thank you for the call. Um, I care. one 800 Five eight hundred. How does a woman know when a guy's looking for more than just tail? You know, like looking for more relationship. Well, a sign. Sometimes he calls you before eleven p.m. That'll be one sign. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Thank you for tuning in. This hour, I, uh, I said that I am proud of what I do, and uh, my legacy, when I leave it, I will be very proud of what we've accomplished here. Gail on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. I just uh, want to talk about Tamaria. Um, I'm a well-educated woman, and uh, I think she's got her wires crossed there. If she knew anything about women in power, she'd know that femininity is way more powerful than masculinity. Mm-hmm. And that if she was really intelligent, she'd use her femininity for the power that she needed to get ahead in this life. That's right. You're right. That's what I think. And I think that, you know, I didn't particularly like your show when I first listened to it. But after time, I started to think, this guy's pretty right. Um, you know, I've got a college degree. I've got a, a higher degree. And I, at first, my inclination was to go, this guy's a jerk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after some time of listening... Hey, you know what? There are a lot of things you got to say that are completely right. And it drives people crazy, but like I say, and like you say, listen for a while and you will see. Yeah, I think it does. It takes some time to listen. I think that um, you would learn from some of the things you have to say because you're only speaking the truth. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, Tamaria needs to get off her little uh, femininity uh, situation and learn that Wearing the skirt might get her a lot farther than wearing the pants. Well, you're not kidding about that. Got nothing guys hate more than a mouthy bitch. I, I got to tell you, I, I've been married for 14 years, and my husband makes a great living. And, you know, hey, I'm fine with cooking and cleaning. I'm fine with taking care of the kids. I might add, that's why you've been married 14 years, and your friends get divorced in two years and three years and four years. That's right. And I know, hey, I know that what my husband wants and what I where I stand in it. And you know what? As long as you know it. You should be okay with it. Bing, bang, boom. Gail, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Josh on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Hey, I'm okay. Hey, first time caller, long time listener. Thank you. Just a huge, huge fan, and I need to remind a lot of these women of something. A long time ago, there was a vote to give women the right to vote. So men gave women the right to vote. They need to shut up, and they need to listen to us. And I got a quick question for you. Yes, Josh. Why don't women wear watches? I don't know. Because there's a clock in the kitchen. 
One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Martin on the Tom Likas show. Tom. Martin. Hey, long time listener. Cool. Big time fan, proud fan. Wow. Let me let me tell you how long I've been listening. Phoenix, Arizona, in the eighties. Wow. Yeah, long time. I went on the air there almost nineteen years ago. It's amazing, isn't it? I'm mean, right. like an old guy, but I've been listening to you since you were out there. I listened every day on my way home, and it was a great time, and it's a great time now. Thank you. I want, I want to talk to you about your uh, theory about uh, good-looking women and how much they have to make and what the guy looks like. Yes. So I make a little over twice what my wife makes. She's a 10. I'm a 2. There we go. Yeah. You're, you're right again. You're always right. <laughs> Thanks for bringing the reality and the dose of realism that men need to be men in this society, Tom. Somebody's got to tell the truth, Martin, and I am proud of it. And I, you know, what will my legacy be? Uh, uh, believe me, it'll live uh, in infamy for sure, and I, I'm uh, completely proud of what we've done. Keep saying it, keep doing it, and uh, hey, Tom. Yes. Blow me up, will you? Here you go, Martin. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. 